Good morning. Welcome to St. Alphonsus Rodriguez on Friday, the 33rd week in Ordinary Time. This is such a beautiful week as we end our liturgical year leading up to the Feast of Christ the King. It brings us directly to all that Jesus has given to us and the Eucharist. We continue our reflections on the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. This morning we are reading the words from our parish life director, Dee Papania. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. John 3.16 may be one of the best, if not the best known and quoted verses from the Bible. When we hear or pray this passage from John, it seems reasonable that most people think of Jesus in his passion, his suffering, and death for our salvation, the price the Lamb of God willingly paid for our redemption and the forgiveness of sins for love of us. Because of Christ's death and resurrection, we now have the possibility of eternal life. And that is most certainly a basic tenet of our faith a summary of God's incredible, unconditional, self-giving love for us, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who would be the perfect sacrifice, restoring us to communion with the divine, making us sharers in everlasting holiness. In reflecting on this passage, however, I realized that the truth of this passage extends far beyond Jesus' passion. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son in the Incarnation, Emmanuel, God with us, enveloped in the understanding of God's gratuitous love for us, of God creating us for himself to share his life and love, we can abide by the notion that God becomes incarnate, not solely for the purpose of our salvation. God so loved the world, so wants to be in relationship with us, that having created us in that love, God chooses to become incarnate, to take on our flesh, to be able to walk among us, share meals with us, converse with us, be known even as God knows each of us, to share intimately with human beings in our own human existence, as human beings know how to and be loved. Establishing us in his great love and desire to be in communion with us, God provides the means to nourish that relationship for God so loved the world that he gave his only son as nourishment for us in the Eucharist. God providing nourishment for God's people is nothing new in scripture. In the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, Jesus himself indicates that this miracle is similar to God's providing nourishment for his people in the desert after the exodus from Egypt. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. John 6, 48. If you eat this bread, Jesus promises you have eternal life. Let's reflect on that again. If you eat this bread, you have eternal life. So much to take in. 
in a homily given at St. Philomena Catholic Church in Detroit in August. Bishop Thomas Grumbleton explains, Jesus is telling us that for all of us who share in this banquet, this Eucharist, the feast of the body and blood of Jesus, we begin to live eternal life now. Most of us, I believe, probably think eternal life is something we gain after we die. It will be that new life as we transition into the full presence of God. But no, Jesus says, it starts right now. We begin to live with his life, which is eternal life. We express this belief in the mystery of faith at Mass. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Or we may proclaim, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We, here in the present, proclaim your death in the past until you come again in the future. Time collapses in the Eucharist and we step into a moment of eternity. And at Mass, the priest speaking on our behalf places a small piece of the host in the chalice and prays. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Eternal life to us, to those who in the here and now receive Christ in this Eucharist, in this time and this place. We are experiencing eternal life in the here and now. The Holy Eucharist is the sacrament of eternal life left to the church by Jesus Christ. St. John Paul II writes, Through the food of the Eucharist, Christ's eternal life penetrates and flows within human life. St. Teresa of Calcutta put it this way, When you look at the crucifix, you understand how much Jesus loved you then. When you look at the sacred host, you understand how much Jesus loves you now. Bishop Grumbleton reminds us, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we come in a sense face to face with this extraordinary mystery that God in Jesus becomes present on our table the altar, and we receive God. This is my body. This is the cup of my blood. When we begin to accept that reality, receive the body and blood of Jesus and let it begin to transform us, we will truly begin to live in an ever more full way, everlasting life, the life of heaven. For God so loved the world, creation, salvation, nourishment, eternal life. This is Eucharist. Take some time to reflect on these beautiful words today. Maybe throughout the week, pick 10 minutes that you can go back and pray with this reflection and think about what St. Teresa says. When you look at the crucifix, you understand how much Jesus loved you then. But when you look at the sacred host, you understand how much Jesus loves you now. This is Eucharist. Amen. <laughs>